Hello, this is Jyotika. This video is a continuation of a previous video that I've uploaded on my channel a few days ago. I'll link that video in the description box. So this is the second part of that video. It is meant for AS, AQA, psychology students who want to prepare for their research method section of the paper. This video should be useful to students from other boards also like edexcel, CIE, IBDP because research methods questions tend to be common across boards. Okay, so continuing from where we left off, I'm just reading out the question first. In a follow-up study, the psychologist asked the same 10 teachers to take part in an experiment to compare two strategies designed to encourage relaxation and lower heart rate. In condition 1, 5 of the teachers were given meditation techniques to complete every day for a week. In condition 2, the other 5 teachers were given a healthy diet to follow for a week. Each teacher's heart rate was measured at the start of the week and at the end of the week. The results are summarized in the table. So just to quickly look at the table, the title reads Mean and Standard Deviation Values for Meditation and Healthy Diet Conditions. In column 1, we have the meditation condition, start of the week, end of the week. In column 2, we have healthy diet condition, start of the week, end of the week. In the rows, we have the mean and the standard deviation respectively. Now, I won't read out the entire table, but we should just glance through what information is given before coming to the question. So, for example, at the start of the week, teachers who were in the meditation condition had a mean heart rate of 76. But by the end of the week, their mean heart rate had come down to 68. So, like this, we can read any cells of the table. Now, coming to the question, what do the mean values in table 1 suggest about the effectiveness of different strategies? Justify your answer. This is for two marks. The demarcation should be clear. One mark is for suggesting something about the effectiveness. Second is for the justification, as clear as that. Now, whenever we have to infer anything from the table, that can be without numbers, without data. It should be an interpretation. We have to think how would the researcher interpret these findings? How would he explain them in words? From that point of view, we will talk about the effectiveness. But when we have to justify, then we have to give numbers. Because this we are answering on basis of what has he made the inference. So he's made the inference on the basis of the data or the numbers. So first point will be an inference or a conclusion. And the second part will highlight those results which have led to that conclusion. Okay, so I'm writing a sample answer for this one. The mean values suggest... Okay, as always, I'm taking the wording from the question itself that the meditation condition was more effective in producing relaxation. This wording I'm getting from the top, from what we had read at the top, that the researcher wanted to encourage relaxation. Okay, and why I'm saying this before I write down just to explain to you, because we can see for the meditation condition, the heart rate has come down by 8 points at the end of the week. But for the healthy diet condition, it's more or less the same. It's come down only by 1 point. So using these figures only we have to justify this is because meditation has resulted in a mean 8 point decrease in heart rate whereas healthy diet has resulted in only a one point decrease.
okay, it is important to specify compared to what so doing the first sentence i haven't compared directly with the healthy diet condition but in the second sentence i have compared it to that Okay, let's look at the next question. What do the standard deviation values for the meditation condition suggest? Justify your answer. The structure or organization of the answer is going to be the same. So I'm not repeating. Only this time our attention should be on the standard deviation column. So we can see standard deviation for meditation is 3.8 at the beginning of the week. But at the end of the week it is 1.8. Standard deviation suggests variability or spread of scores. Typically, how different are scores from the mean value? So, at the start of the week, the scores are quite different from the mean value. In the sense, there are a number of participants who have done much better than 76 on heart rate or much worse than 76. But at the end of the week, everyone is very close to 68 because the standard value, standard division value is very small. So, variability has significantly decreased. Sorry, I won't use the word significantly. It has decreased substantially from start of the week to the end of the week. So we have to uh, present it in those terms. Again, like I said, the format is going to remain the same. So my first sentence will be a conclusion. Second sentence will have the data. The standard deviation values suggest... that the variability amongst participants in heart rate has lessened at the end of the week The values have come down by two points to one point eight. Okay, some students ask me that can we exceed the line if you feel you are exceeding the number of lines given to write the answer you don't need to include wording from the question you can answer more directly everyone has their own style of answering so i'm just repeating in this video also what i present are sample or model answers they are not fixed answers that you have to only give secondly uh, i'm writing on the screen which is making uh, my handwriting take some more space because the zoom level determines how much space is there in your when you write with paper pencil the spacing becomes different so don't go by how much space i am taking do your practice and see how much space you are taking adjust your word length or your handwriting accordingly okay so that is for 111 and 112 i'm coming to the next page now Continuing with the same scenario, they have asked us outline how the psychologist could have obtained informed consent while conducting the follow-up study. Since the psychologist had taken consent only for the first study, not for the follow-up, so he needs to draft a new informed consent form. So now we have to suggest how. The command term is outline, but the main focus has to be on how. Like I had mentioned previously also, some students will get into why. They'll start justifying why informed consent is important to prevent harm, to let participants decide whether they want to participate or not. They're not asking for that argument here. They want you to give what all should be covered in informed consent. Preferably, if you can give systematically, that is better. Let's look at the scenario again. Read the scenario again and think about what all is important to inform participants while taking their consent. So one definitely is always about the task that they have to perform in the study. So they should know what is to be done in the study, then only they can decide they want to participate or not. So firstly, they should be told that they will have to either have to practice meditation or follow a healthy diet for a week. Even the duration is important to inform them. Think from a participant's point of view. 
if you were being asked to participate in a study what all would you want to do write that also they should know that their heart rate is going to be measured so they'll have to give a measurement of their heart rate so because i'll be able to give two tasks that they have to do i'll get one mark for each and then the answer is for three marks so i should have one more point one more point would be about the general points which are there anything on confidentiality privacy being maintained such things so here uh, confidentiality we can tell them would be maintained their heart rate uh, mean heart rate or standard deviation means any data related to their heart rate would not be published with their names when the results are published you can also talk about how they will have to sign on a written consent form or you can also talk about how you let them know that they will withdraw withdrawal is also quite important here because it's a week long study some participants initially they come up because they feel it would be easy to perform but when it's a long term study after a few days they might find it difficult to do the task required so then they should have that option to leave the study so like that there are number of points which are justifiably important i'm just taking three of them your points can be different from mine okay so here i would say the psychologist should prepare a written consent form it should specify that participants will have to either practice meditation or follow a healthy diet for a week also that they have to let their heart rate be measured they can also be assured that their data will be kept confidential so their heart rate measure will not be published with their identity the next question is in the follow up study the psychologist used a different group of people in each condition which would have affected the results outline two ways in which the psychologist might change the design of the study to deal with this problem so the psychologist has used independent groups design or independent measures design now that can prove to be expensive it has certain weaknesses whenever they ask us to improve anything change anything we first have to identify what are the weaknesses and then think of possible solutions when it comes to independent measures design uh, the study is about heart rate uh, relaxation relaxation which has been operationalized as heart rate now participants could naturally have certain issues related with their heart rate which could be making their heart rate anyways faster than normal or little slower than normal so that can create differences between groups some natural differences between them with respect to their heart rate rather than whether they are practicing meditation or they are having a healthy diet so what can be done to 
reduce this problem of participant variables on individual differences is one as we know random allocation of participants again the keyword is ways again they want to know how they don't want to know why random allocation is important rather how random allocation would be done so random allocation would be done as usual with the help of some drawing of chips lottery method something like that so i'll explain that when i'm writing another thing that could be done is the use of repeated measures design instead so the same teachers could be asked for a week to follow a healthy diet their relaxation could be measured and then they could uh, for another week practice meditation and then their relaxation could be measured again and then compared across these conditions only thing is when we do repeated measures design then it comes with problems of its own such as which order should uh, be maintained what should be the sequence of uh, practices like should they do meditation first or should they do the diet part first so then we can suggest counterbalancing in the answer itself another possibility is to do a matched pairs design i think the best thing to match across participants in this study would be their heart rate uh, health health is directly related to heart rate so participants uh, heart rate only could be used as a measurement factor before anything could be done in the study a heart rate measure could be taken and on that basis pair wise they could be matched and allocated to either meditation or healthy diet condition so many possibilities are there i'm taking random allocation and repeated measures for now okay so my first suggestion would be random allocation of participants could be done to the healthy diet and meditation conditions okay now i have to explain how after giving my suggestion first i should give the suggestion straight of random allocation don't beat around the bush and then say this is random allocation because by the end of it like students will explain lottery method chits everything and they forget to mention the word at all random allocation so right at the beginning it is better to give and then to explain we can say the names of the teachers could be written on chits which could be four folded and placed in a bowl then blindly chits could be drawn and some of the teachers could be allocated to either condition next a repeated measures design could be used instead the same teachers could be asked to practice meditation in one week followed by a healthy diet in the next week or vice versa at the end of each week
heart rate could be measured. The sequence of meditation and diet could be alternated for half the teachers. That's it for this paper. It completes the research method section of this paper and that's it for my video also. If you have any questions about this video, you can ask me in the comments box below. I'll try to come back soon with another video and perhaps on another topic other than research methods. If there is some topic you want me to take up, you can suggest in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time.